Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us here. I'm joined by the women by about many names, the Davy, Helen Boots, uh, Not America's Sweetheart. I'm sure you prefer the, the title, Chaotic Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Davy Yen, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for joining us here. Yeah, no um, problem. So, thank you for having me. Absolutely. You're, you're a busy woman. You're kicking people out of promotions. You're ending... <laughs> year-long rivalries so it's you've been <laughs> you've been making history all around the place here yeah a lot going on a lot going on <laughs> can you has the feeling sunk in yet you've had the title for about a month you've defended it successfully has the the feeling sunk in yet that you are the chaotic wrestling heavyweight champion uh, it's still pretty weird um, to say that. It's like just such a surreal feeling. Um, I even like started talking about this the other day of when I first started training, like my, in my class, like the boys I was friends with were like, do you ever see us as like maybe winning the heavyweight championship? And like, I was the only one who did it. And I never, I never thought of it for myself. I was like, man, none of you ever won it. And I did. That's wild. Like, it's it's a really, really cool feeling. It's crazy. You mentioned um, wrestling and training. And you, for years, you were the only, the girl to, so you had to wrestle the guys. What is mm -hmm. your what is your stance on intergender wrestling? And maybe explain it for, for those that don't, aren't familiar with it. Uh, I mean, for me, intergender wrestling is just, you know, it's just, it's wrestling. Um, like I've, I've said this before, if I didn't train with the boys, I wouldn't have been able to train for like six years. Um, so I felt like, I mean, I wrestle these guys at class all the time. Why can't I wrestle them on a show? Like they're all really talented. I want to be able to wrestle them on a show. Um, not that like the women's you know, talent pool is lacking because women's wrestling is very, very, uh, you know, popular and talented right now but like I shouldn't have to limit myself because of my gender with the people I'm allowed to wrestle um I think it just gives me opportunities to learn from you know people who are who are better than me um it just gives me more opportunities different stories to tell different matches to have um and it just it's just so fun um, so I would never want to just limit myself by like, oh, I can only wrestle women because just, just like, there's just such a vast world out there. Yes. Um, and then speaking of the vast world, you teamed with a man by the name of JT Dunn for a little bit that you have a, a love sort of disdain for, and you, you've won the, the tag team titles with him and you held them for almost a, a calendar year. Has that like kind of helped you navigate what it's like to, to be a champion? in the space that you're in right now? Um, I would say so, yeah. Um, JT definitely helped me learn a lot of things um, and kind of elevated me to this level that I'm at now that um, nobody else had elevated me to before. And it was like very, very quick. Um, so yeah, I think teaming with him definitely helped me out a lot. Absolutely. Now walk me through the journey to, to get to your grand accomplishment of being the face of chaotic wrestling <laughs> yeah it's crazy uh it's really crazy i started at chaotic uh you know it's where i started training uh it's where i had you know my first like real real match um and we were always just kind of like you know the popcorn match match before main you know you got like six to eight is wrestling the same people all the time um and then I, um, I like stopped getting booked for a bit there. Uh, they were kind of going in a different direction and there is still, you know, only one woman spot on the card. So they had two other girls that they were cycling through and, you know, I wasn't used for like a year or more. Um, and, and then I, you know, got asked back and they wanted to do like more intergender stuff. And then the tag with JT happened and then the separation from JT happened. It just kind of snowballed into like, hey, the fans really resonate with you. You're really talented. Like, why not? Why wouldn't these matches in this feud be the main event? And then when he won the title, I was like, okay, why wouldn't this be a championship match? Because like, 
this is what people want. Um, and it's really, it's really insane to, you know, when I, we were in the, the, the Burlington Marriott and that hotel uh, ballroom and just like, well, like all the people there, like giving me a standing ovation is just like, whoa, like when I debuted for chaotic wrestling, like they didn't even like clap. <laughs> and now they like, I think I cleared like $250 in my entrance, you know, like they're just like throwing money at me. And I was like, this is crazy. It's been a roller coaster. <laughs> You mentioned the, the, you collect money when you come down to the ring. I was watching one of the matches and the first thing I saw was this guy putting dollar bills on the guardrail. I could have cared less what else was going on. I wanted to know why he was laying $10 worth of money on the, on the railing. So as the, the hurricane would say, what's up with that? <laughs> so, um, it kind of started, uh, there was a cold fury, uh, which is chaotic wrestling's like biggest show of their year or of the year. Um, I can't remember what year it was, but, um, at that point in time, um, I was just valeting and I was valeting Ilya Markopoulos and, um, he, we were doing like this presidential kind of character, stable, whatever. And, um, I had on like a white business suit with like a pencil skirt, you know, and like, this guy left two dollars on the barricade and so I took them obviously um like it's free money so the, like the fans like kind of started to laugh and I was like a heel at this time so they would leave a couple dollars and whatever and then like I turned baby face and they just wanted to give me money <laughs> so um it's it's kind of like wholesome that they love me so much they just want to leave dollars on the barricade so and I'll take it because, like, a girl's trying to pay off her credit cards. Okay. <laughs> it becomes so popular. You have a shirt on Pro Wrestling Tees. They believe says, like, show up, collect money, and then go home or something like that. Yep. Arrive, collect money, leave. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Um, now, you, you talked about how much the fans are so much a big part of this. I know you've wrestled in front of a limited crowd over the past year and a half with all the craziness going on. How's that been for you personally? How's that been from your experience? Um, the pandemic wrestling was definitely very, very odd. Uh, <laughs> um, it, yeah, it really like, it, you know, I was having like incredible matches and we would just be like, oh, I really wish like there was like real people there. Not, I mean, not that like there wasn't real people, like it's a canned audience. It's, you know, students or other wrestlers and stuff like that. And it's fun to wrestle for them because it's like a, it is, it's a genuine reaction when you're wrestling for your coworkers, basically. Um, and it's really hard to get reactions out of them. I know for me personally, like I really need to be entertained because I watch so much wrestling to have a genuine reaction from it. So like to have genuine reactions from your peers is, is really cool. Um, but it definitely, it, it lacked that certain like emotional feeling um for a long time without having fans there <laughs> now you mentioned the emotion watching some of your matches I see you in the ring and even on the mic you're very expressive like you could tell the whole story just by looking at the the facial expression and your in your your body language how did you, and even when you hit certain moves, you're, you tell the story just by the way you present yourself. How did this, this expressive side of you come about? How did you learn to do that? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you. Um, I genuinely don't know um, because I'm a very, very like shy person. Um, and I think I really, really struggled with that when I first started wrestling. I started wrestling three days after I turned 18. So, um, I was really young and very, very, very shy, um, really like socially, you, you know, like very quiet, didn't like to talk to people. Um, and then just kind of all of a sudden I just like stopped caring, I guess. <laughs> it just really stopped caring. And I was like, I really don't care like what people think about me. Um, so I'm just going to be wild. Um, and I really like 
like making like crazy faces and like having being very expressive and loud and I just like kind of just blossomed out of my shell um and, and it just evolved into what I am today and I like still um you know every day I still try to feel like more comfortable in my own skin and like when I watch my matches like there are things that I like want to improve on and things like that but um definitely uh it means a lot to me when somebody says like I'm expressive <laughs> and I tell a story with with my emotions in my face because when I first started wrestling I was told I was like the most boring least charismatic wrestler of all times so <laughs> I'm glad I'm improved <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the support from everybody that you've gotten especially with your, your recent run and you're in such an exclusive club of women world champions in a, a male spot you're the top champion in a, a intergender company what does it mean to have the the support and the just the the confidence of everybody between the the company your your fellow peers and everybody just really having your back in the circumstance yeah, it's, um, it's really crazy because wrestling can be very, very lonely. Um, and to be able to just, you know, have, you know, like the, the value shown by like companies that are getting behind me and like my friends and stuff like that. It's, you know, the faith I never had in myself. Um, and it's, it's just really crazy. It's very humbling. Um, is when you think about it logistically, like people, you know, win championships because they sell tickets and people want to buy a ticket to see them and um, like they're going to make a company money. It's not just because like, oh, hey, we like this person, like let's put a title on them. Like there is a business aspect to professional wrestling um, and to have that faith in me of like, yeah, you're going to be in the main event and you're going to sell tickets and make this company money is like just mind boggling. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I can't imagine that. It's, I was watching um, Cody Rhodes' new show that he has with his wife and he was talking about how a professional wrestler's job is to sell tickets. That's the bottom line. Is your job is to get people into the door. Now, once people get into the door and maybe they haven't seen you wrestle before, how would you describe your, your sort of in-ring style? I would say my in-ring style is um, very, um, like, power-based, um, very, uh, very aggressive. Um, yeah, you're not going to see, like, flips or anything. Maybe I'll break out, like a, like, a head scissors or something every once in a while. Um, and not very technical. Like, it's just very, like brawler bruiser you're just gonna get beat up that's what you're gonna say <laughs> if it works it works man <laughs> so i know that dave yen am i saying that right dave yen yes, yes. <laughs> i've been saying it non-stop like the last three days so and i have a difficult to pronounce last name so i know how annoying it is when somebody mispronounces that um so davian is also your real name but it's the name of your your wrestling persona so who is Davian the character to you? Uh, honestly, like Davian the character is pretty much Davian in real life with the volume turned up a little bit. Um, I never, like, I felt like when people were trying to force me to be what they envisioned me to be is when I was very inauthentic and I, I didn't connect with the crowd. Um, then I stopped caring what people think and what they want from me. And I just started to do my own thing and what made me happy. Um, and that's when I really started like to connect with people and like kind of get, you know, some steam behind me because I was stopped trying to like be something I wasn't. Um, I am jealous of people who can like create this like over the top character and like you know, have it resonate with people and just have all this like character, character, character. Like I, I tell people all the time, like I have to be good at wrestling because I don't have like uh, this over the top, wild, entertaining character to fall back on. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just me. It's just very, very much me. Like the person that is in the ring and I mean, kind of like a, like a psycho, like 
you're gonna gonna get your ass kicked um and then me you know just chilling whatever is very much more mellow um but I do kind of go from like zero to 60 in like 0.5 seconds like I can be talking like this and then be like yelling and like very expressive uh very very fast and it's just kind of you know the a flip a like uh like a switch just flips <laughs> so there's there's really not a lot of difference between what you see in the ring and what you get in real life. <laughs> now, now you mentioned your, your, your brutal style, as we would say. You have a move called the Davy End Your Life, where you stick somebody back first into the ring post, and then you come running across the ring and then hit a low drop kick as they have nowhere to go. Where, what are the origins of that? Because that is, that is something you don't see every day. <laughs> Um, Alicia Edwards actually saw Mickey James and Beth Phoenix do it like a random match on raw. And she was like, you should do this. Um, and I did. And I, I literally just like used it randomly in a match. And, um, everybody was like, that was so cool. Like you need to keep that. Um, and I, and I kept it and then it kind of just eventually evolved into my finish. This one works out. Now, you've won multiple championships across multiple promotions. What was it like to win that very first championship? Um, if I could remember <laughs> it, um, I think it was the Triple W championship. I think it was. Um, I remember it being very cool. And I remember like asking my family to go to the show. Um, and my reign, I think, was like one one show. Like it was so short. <laughs> like, it was nothing. But I remember it being like very, very cool just because it was like the first one and it was like a woman's championship. It was prestigious. Um yeah, yeah. But it's like it was so long ago now. It was like eight years ago. So <laughs> You've stacked them all up. You can't remember them. <laughs> so for, for a couple of times, you, you've quit wrestling or left wrestling. Why has that been? It was, I think there was one time in 2018 and some other time. Um, so unfortunately, I never actually like left. I've like threatened a lot. Um, like very like brief period, like I think, I mean, in the pandemic, obviously, like I like nobody was wrestling. So that was a one time, like I had time off, but like in, in, in like 2018, I had definitely been like, yeah, I want to be done, but people just continue to book me. And I just like took bookings when I just like shouldn't have, cause I wasn't in the good headspace, like put on a good performance. Um, but yeah, the, the, like the actual one where I like was like, I am done was June last year. Um, and I like told the people that I'm very close with in wrestling like I I'm done like I'm not going to wrestle anymore and it was just like I I was just in certain a, a point in my life like the pandemic was happening um like I had a, a cushy job um I had just purchased my first home like I was like yeah like I think I'll be okay without wrestling um Anthony Green then uh, got signed to NXT um and he was just like kind of forcing me to like still go to training and I was like dude I quit wrestling like and he's like nah you, you haven't um and like he he moved he went to NXT and I was like damn like you know these people that I'm really close with are still doing really well and um and then like Limitless started doing the road tapings and it's just like oh like these are so fun and, and then it just evolved into what it is now. And I'm like, oh God, like, I, like, I can't, I can't leave. Like, it would be, it would really, I would really regret it um, if I didn't give it my all because wrestling is just something I love so much. And I think I was, you know, just like afraid because the pandemic kind of took it away. And I was like, yeah, like, just find something else to fall in love with. But like, I, I can't. <laughs> and there's just like nothing like it. 
Um, so I, have, I, I ripped my whole life apart. I got a new job. Uh, I sold my house. I'm literally sitting in my closet in my new apartment because I'm still unpacking uh, and I tried to find a good lighting um, to, you know, to be closer to the school that I train at. Like I'm only 12 minutes away where I was an hour and a half away before so I could be there all the time and like just really, really try to make something of wrestling. <laughs> Always, it's always amazing. Um, and it's a great story, and I'm obviously glad you're better, but thank you for, for sharing that as well. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, we all go through rough times, and I think, like, it's important to just, you know, not make super drastic decisions based off of um, a momentary, like, sadness or something like that. Um, you know, just find what makes you happy and just really go for it. That's, that's my life motto. It sounds good. And another person who, who makes you happy, how would you describe your, your relationship with the leader of the scrunchie squad in Becca? Oh, that girl, that girl, probably uh, between her and Anthony and, uh, and Ava Everett, they all like saved my career. Um, it was right around the time Ava and I had had a conversation that we were both going to leave wrestling. Um, and, and we were both very supportive of each other's decision. And then we wanted to inform like all the girls in new England that like we were going to be leaving. Um, and, and we weren't as close with Becca at that point in time, but, um, we knew she had like a lot of potential and we didn't want anything like, to, like, I don't want to say bad, but like, we don't want anything like negative to happen to her in wrestling. So we were like, we're always going to be there for you. Like, let's go do it like a girl's dinner, like all the girls in New England. And like, we'll, we'll tell them like, we're going to quit leaving, but or, or we're, we're going to leave wrestling. But like, still, we're going to be there for you. And, um, and Becca was like, my heart sank, like when you guys told us you were going to be done. And then like, you know, she just, she came, she's just like an anomaly. She grew so much, so fast. And she like inspires me so much to like really elevate myself. But I was like, oh God, like, this is just like, it's so nice to have like other women who care. Like for so long, it was just me. And I was like wrestling the same people, um, except for Alicia Edwards and, and Mistress Belmont, they were absolutely wonderful to, to work with and help me grow. But it was just like, oh God, I'm just wrestling like the same people. I'm so stagnant. And then you have like the Ava Everett's, the Becca's, the Paris Van Dales, and they just like reinvigorated like my love. And it's just like, oh, they're so incredible. <laughs> It's the community that brings everybody together. It makes you it, want to yeah, be. It really is. <laughs> and then, so, okay, I don't want to ask this question. Maybe I'm the only one that cares, but what you've recently been added to a video game in the past week. You are not only, so uh, the mobile game Indie Wrestler on the, the App Store at Google Play, not an ad, but what's it like to be not only featured in a video game, but be one of the only two female world champions in the same game it's wild like whenever people like come up to me with like a trading card with me on it or something I'm like what like this is so crazy also like if like the trading cards and stuff like most of the time I don't know I'm on them so if somebody like walks up to me and like can you sign this I'm like I'm on a card like it like shocks me like on a card in a video game like what like it's just it's so crazy it's just wild i'm like i never never expect any of this and it's so cool so coming up oh actually you recently appeared on on dark Ele on aew's dark elevation back in rochester mm -hmm. um or at least that's where the, it was filmed what was your experience like going down to to that promotion um, it was awesome. I loved it. Um, I loved, m you know, my two trips to Jacksonville. Um, I, I loved, you know, going to Rochester. It was really nice to go to Rochester and like wrestle in front of people. Um, not only just people, but like a huge crowd. <laughs> um, and then to like hear like a couple people like yelling my name when I was out there, I was like, whoa, this is crazy. 
Um, yeah, I loved it. I would, I would love to do more. Um, you know, that's, that's the ultimate goal. So yeah. <laughs> now, Anthony Green was also down there. You mentioned him, you're facing, you're defending your title again against Anthony and he'll get a little bit more of recovery time. So coming up on October 8th, you'll be defending your title against Anthony Green at Chaotic Wrestling's A Haunting in Tewksbury. For people, for why should wrestling fans watch wrestling from Chaotic? Um, Chaotic Wrestling, I, I mean, it's, it's my home. Um, and I think, like, we have one of the most talented rosters. Um, have very you know compelling stories there's not a lot of like independent promotions that can do consistent storytelling um and I think we're really good at that so um and the wrestling is great it's family friendly there's something for everybody on on the show so I mean I love it uh so if you like me you should support chaotic wrestling <laughs> <laughs> It, it's incredible for, for you to, to be in the position that you're in and congratulations on, on doing that. What are, what are the plans for the future? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, um, just, you know, continue doing what I'm doing and hopefully uh, somehow land a job somewhere uh, where I make my living wrestling. That's the dream, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's the dream. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to add here? No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, well, thank you. Where can people find you on social media and the internet? Um, social media, um, Twitter and Instagram at Davian underscore underscore. Um, I also have like a Facebook like page. It's facebook.com slash not America sweetheart. Um, and then I do have a pro wrestling tea store and a big cartel store. Um, all easily searchable by searching Davian. Um, yeah, that's everywhere you can find me. <laughs> that, that's great. You can, I think I'm on Twitter at Prank Journalist, and then you can find my Facebook page, Signature Voice Prod, and my website is signaturevoiceprod.net, and my YouTube, which is, is on, is Signature Voice Production. Now I have to remember all the things. Now it's, <laughs> it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Um, so, I wish you the, the best in your defense against Anthony Green at a haunting in Tewksbury. Hopefully you're not too scared. And thank you very much for joining us here. Thank you.